As you may have read, today's homily is entitled Reflections on Revelry. My favorite definition of revelry comes from vocabulary.com, which writes, revelry is a wild, fun time. The noun revelry means merrymaking, but because it comes from the French word reveler, meaning to rebel, its tone indicates carousing or noisy partying. It's not your grandparents' tame, sedate cocktail party. Revelry is a full throttle festive gathering where people outwardly enjoy themselves. In reading this, I was reminded of William Blake's poem, The Little Vagabond, rendered so wonderfully in song by folk singer Greg Brown. Dear mother, dear mother, the church is cold, the, but the alehouse is healthy and pleasant and warm. Besides, I can tell where I am used well. Such usage in heaven will never do well. And it goes on from there, celebrating all the gifts that the alehouse might teach the church about revelry. Is there a place for revelry at church? I absolutely believe there is. Outwardly enjoying ourselves and full throttle festive gatherings are good for the soul, which is why my other working titles for today were The Sacred Art of Celebration or The Spirituality of Partying. Yet revelry is a tough topic to discuss right now with so many of our festive social gatherings curtailed, canceled, or moved online. Even so, we may still feel pulled to make merry, to throw a party, to celebrate holidays. We see anecdotal evidence of this pull when we hear of places like Russell's selling out of Christmas trees before December 15th for the first time ever, or we read about the major shipping delays as gift purchases and exchanges move from in-person to remote options. Clearly, many people are not just giving up on the holidays. They are digging in and making it work somehow, even if it's not the same. And how can it be the same? When COVID rages across the nation, overflowing hospitals, and setting sobering records. How do we revel in such moments? It's complicated, I know. But we are complicated as human persons. We daily maneuver risk and possibility, grief and joy. Again and again, we feel tugged by sadness and pulled by the urge to have some fun Today's Music Sunday invites us to experience these tensions. We will have boisterous music that may even inspire you to leap out of your chair and start dancing in true Revels fashion. Or, well, at least tap your foot and sing along. We will also have some quieter, gentler music, as well as a time of remembrance and prayer that embraces the sorrows that surround us in a time of pandemic. Both revelry and sorrow have a place in our lives. In the reflection by the Reverend Elia Kemmler that Kate just read, we heard Kemmler consider how to respond to this mix of emotions in this holiday season by sharing how her mother became lost to the beauty of the night sky she encourages us to issue joy, an open invitation, and then start paying attention to how and where joy shows up. When is the last time you noticed joy in your life? Have you made space in your life to notice the night sky, to take delight in the bite of a sugary cookie, or to revel in a favorite pleasure? Revelry has a place in our lives by reminding us to pay attention to the possibility of joy. This is not to say that revelry, celebrating, or even partying are the only way to joy. 
but for many, these are a path to joy. Take a moment to consider some of the best parties or celebrations that you have participated in. Perhaps it was a wedding reception, a birthday party, a holiday gathering, or maybe it just was, well, college, or in particular friends or places come to mind. In my own memories, I might be able to think of a time or two of such times of revelry. In seminary, for example, I had a group of friends that loved music, as well as I had the largest space in which to gather. Combined, this meant that my living room became a place for dance parties many times during seminary. I also fondly remember a dance party or two here at First Parish where quite a few of you showed your moves on the dance floor, including to the tune of Uptown Funk. Such times of joyous, boisterous fun can renew us which may be just the kind of activity we need when life feels so relentlessly heavy and sad. Even so, I want to acknowledge that there are times of deep grief when such revelry feels too impossible to engage. As the ancient Hebrew prophet wrote, for everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to mourn, a time to dance. This is a season and a place, excuse me, there is a season and a place for many different experiences and emotions in our lives. My hope for all of us is that amidst the sorrows and anxieties we may be feeling, that we also dare to issue an invitation to joy to show up in our lives. Perhaps we might even find a moment of two of joy here at church today. So may it be. Amen. <laughs>